Welcome back. I'm in the basement with my overwintering peppers. As I look at them, the peppers are still green. The stalks are still green. It's been probably about three weeks since I last updated. This particular habanero is still putting these really pale, pale, pale flowers, or leaves, excuse me, out. But the only thing that I've noticed is that this Hungarian yellow wax, it's definitely dying out on this end. I've got some browning on the tips of all of these. And the other Hungarian yellow wax is also experiencing some browning. So I don't know if that one is going to come back, but all of the others do seem to be handling the basement and the level of light. Of course, the two test comes when I go to put these in the indoor greenhouse upstairs in a month or so. But I'm gonna give these guys a drink of water. In the indoor greenhouse, there isn't much of an update for the restarted ginger. It's only been a week. I don't expect to see anything with the ginger nor the turmeric for about a month. All of the pineapples have now been transplanted into larger pots and I just recently watered these so they are doing really well. And this one is putting off yet another pup. So I've got one here and one here. So even though my pineapple top experiment did not work, I'm getting two replacement plants for free. Also over here, I have repotted the ginger plants to a three gallon pot all by themselves. The turmeric I put into a container. I did drill holes at the bottom for drainage and I've been bottom watering them. But the turmeric from previous that you saw both get transplanted, they are both here. And this is from the over the summer. So this one, it's not dying. It didn't look like its partner, so I'm letting that stay where it is. If it still stays like that, I'll probably replant that too into another container, like a three gallon container like that. But that's what's happening in the tropical area because the everything I'm growing in the indoor greenhouse right now is considered tropical. And I've started to get ready for my spring gardening. I've got my grow lights set up. They're not plugged in, but I'm gonna have a couple of grow stations as I mentioned before. Lights are there, a light there. So these are gonna be my main grow stations down here, up here, and these two over here once everything begins. Early spring to early summer garden, it's time to get started. One of those things are onions and shallots um, that you typically want to plant somewhere about a month to two months before your frost. I'm in zone 6B7A. My frost date is supposed to be April 19th, but in my area the saying is don't plant before Mother's Day. Sometimes we can get frost as late as the third week of May. But onions, I started last year about this time. So I'm going to start them again. Currently the date is January 16th. By the time this gets posted, it'll be closer to the end of the month. But anytime between now 
and the beginning of February is a good time to get a head start on your onions. The technique that I use is by far not anything that is set in stone. I take a lot of influence from other YouTubers that I watch and this is what's basically worked for me. Gardening is really one of those things for me where I test it out and I don't work. I don't do it again if it does work. I try to keep a record of what I did. So this channel is basically my record keeping of what I do from year to year. So what I'm doing this year is going to plant the yellow of Parma, flat of Italy, and the shallot over here. Now all of these varieties are long day. So in my area, long day is the recommended onion. You definitely wanna check that before you start growing onions, whether you need long day, intermediate, or short day. Now I had success with this back here, which is the Weatherfield Red and the Yellow Spanish because I planted them in the spring. I tried to do these two in the fall with no six, I mean, in the summer really with no success because I tried to direct sow them outside instead of starting them inside. So if I'm gonna try onions again for the fall, I think this year I'm going to try to utilize the indoor greenhouse for my starts before planting them outside. Now the toothpicks are only here to separate. I didn't wanna do a whole tray of red I always have a mislabeling error. So I wanted to put a yellow onion and a red onion in the same tray. That way, if I forget to label something, if I'm working in this tray, I know if it's got a purple tone, it's definitely this one. If it's got a yellow tone, it's definitely this one. There was one year where every pepper I planted was mislabeled and every tomato was mislabeled. So I try to help myself out in that respect. So I'm gonna start over here and Planting onion seeds is real simple. They seem to take wherever and you don't have to plant them deeply. I just sprinkle the seeds on top and you can definitely overseed these. I wanna do as many onions as possible as I planted some last year and the ones I planted in the spring they definitely came up and I was really successful, but I did not have enough onions and the taste is completely different than what you grow or get in the garden. So I do want a bunch more. I have no idea where I'm gonna plant them all. I imagine I will have bags in the backyard, in the front yard of onions because I really do want a lot of onions. But I also plant onions or garden and do the starts for my mother. Even though she has a little girl station of her own in her house, I end up growing for the both of us. So anything that comes up, I always share with her and she ends up growing in her garden, which is not the same size as mine, but it is a good size garden as well. I almost made a mistake. I just said I'm trying to be good with labeling and I wrote flat of Italy on both of my red. And the second one is the weather's field. So this is how easily I mess myself up. I'm just doing a loose covering of soil over top. They don't need to be deeply buried. They'll break through. The roots on um, onions are very, very, very forgiving. This particular soil I made up just the night before. It's already pre-moistened, so I'm not gonna be watering these, but I do try to always use a double tray. That way I can bottom water easily and don't have to disturb the seeds initially. And by double tray, I mean I have a non-slotted planting tray at the bottom, and this one is slotted, 
and I put water in the bottom and set this one on top of it. It comes in very handy when they're in the seedling stage. I don't find it's necessary if I have the actual seed trays or containers that you plant in, but if you're planting like this where the soil is right inside of a tray, it's a lot easier to do the double tray method. And I'm someone that does enjoy using heat mats for my plants to give them a jump start. In January, my house is particularly cold, so it does help me with germination. The first couple of years, I didn't use heat mats and it was hit or miss. And one year, I tried three times to get things to germinate and they just wouldn't because the temperature wasn't warm enough in the house. So now I use heat mats and if your house is 70 or above all the time, great for you. I don't have that luxury, so I need the heat mats. I don't think you might need that if you were in a warmer climate. But all of my seeds have now been covered. They're gonna go on a heat mat. Once they do start to sprout, I give them about 14 to 16 hours of light and then cut back to about 12 hours, which is what it normally would be in the area. But that's the planting for my onions. This is the beginning of my 2022 growth season. I'm excited. I do hope you've enjoyed this content. Thanks for watching.